this was my spot last night and found it in the dark using iOverlander but uh, it was already after 11 o'clock and I needed somewhere to crash <laughs> so this was it the settings kind of nice here by the river looks like there's a dam over there and the loud bridge which was loud pretty much all night so it is Friday September 6 and I had an interesting evening last night I tried to sleep in just kind of take my time today and uh I know I put some miles behind me but it, it is an absolutely beautiful day so I might be stopping more often than I thought I would um, but I'm getting a really slow start I did some grocery shopping yesterday so I've got to organize and figure out where everything goes um, which is always interesting if I buy too much stuff but last night I'm gonna try to go through this real quick so back in Calgary I had a hub issue and I thought it might be the front drive shaft, so I took that off, didn't work, broke, broke a bolt in the process, ended up being the hub anyway, and the hub was replaced, everything was fine. Outside of Alaska, on my way back from the Dempster Highway, I started to get what I thought was the same feeling of what I felt when the hub was bad. But I couldn't pinpoint the issue, um, it started getting a little bit worse, it was just a slight vibration, nothing bad and I was pretty convinced that it was the hub and actually the same hub. So fast forward to when I met Ralph, who I met on a Facebook forum for overlanding. He let me have his uh, driveway to get a hub, change it out. So I changed out the new one that I already had on here and took it for a spin around his neighborhood. And it, I couldn't quite tell if that was the issue or not. So luckily he had jacks and jack stands and everything. I didn't have to rip all that out of my vehicle. But as soon as I got on the road, after leaving his place, it wasn't the problem. So now I've got the SKF hub that I got in Calgary sitting inside my Jeep, another hub on the front left. And now I'm thinking it's gotta be the right hub because again, the symptoms were pretty much all the same, except a little bit of the noise was different. But it, it, it really sounded like it was coming out of a wheel end. So I've been putting it off. I finally decided I'm going to change out the hub. So I found a place outside of White Horse here in Canada, a uh, con uh, gravel pad um, that overlanders use to stay overnight. I jacked this thing up. I think this hub's going to be a problem. I haven't had it off in a year or two, and uh, it goes off without a hitch. Except when I put it all back together, I put my dust plate on wrong. So I had to back out the hub bolts, reconfigure the dust plate, and then I could put my uh, brakes back on. So I do all that, leave all my tools out because now I need to take it for a test run. Nope, exact same sound. Now it's even worse. It actually been getting worse throughout the day, which convinced me that I needed to do it that day. So, because I was in Whitehorse and I could go to a shop. So now I'm not sure what to do, but then I realized that, you know what, even though it doesn't sound like it's coming from there, it very well could be my axle housing. For whatever reason, at that moment in time, I noticed that my lockers weren't clicking when I was turning. However, when I had it up for the hub and I turned the wheels, everything clicks and sounds fine. But now on this test run, and all I did was touch the hub, there's no clicking when I'm turning. So now I'm, I'm thinking there's something wrong with the main gear. So now I'm thinking, I'm gonna have to take it to a shop. I'm gonna have to either take my axle shafts apart and just put the stubs on the wheel ends and run without axle shafts, or I'm gonna have to take the, re the actually it's not a ring gear because I've got an Aussie locker in there, take the Aussie locker out and just run with it, you know, with just the bare minimum that I need inside the axle housing. But then I decide I'm gonna take off the axle shaft and see if that doesn't solve everything. So that's what I did. That wasn't fun. Even though it was just off, it was still a pain in the ass to get out and took it off took it for a test run everything's gone so it's definitely inside the axle housing now i know there's little springs on my aussie locker that if they're not working properly it's not going to do the uh, um, the articulation like it should but when i'm driving here and i drive around in this lot or whenever i'm turning now the clicking is fine so it has to do probably with the spindle gear um, or the gear that, I don't know exactly what that's called, but the gear that is attached to 
uh, the front drive shaft. So I'm not sure. Long story long, I am running in two-wheel drive. There is no way I am paying a shop to crack that open, take off my wheel lens to get at all the gears and do everything, and then tell me that I need to spend hundreds of dollars on a new part or whatever. I have hardly used four-wheel drive on the last, I would say, three months of my trip. And every time I have engaged it, it was just to take some pressure or some stress off the rear axle when I was maybe going up steep inclines or something like that. So for that reason, no four-wheel drive until I can get to, I don't know, so a couple of people have offered me their garages. Um, so I might do that down in Washington or Oregon, take a look at it, see if it's easy to fix. But for now, there's no sound. I don't think I'm gonna do any more damage than I've already done. Drive shaft sitting up top and it runs great. I'll probably get a little bit better fuel mileage without that dragging whatever it was and without that uh, front drive shaft spinning. But um, yeah, so I finished, I started about seven. I didn't finish till about 10. Had to clean everything up in the dark. I'm sorry, there's no footage of that. When I get in those situations, I got one thing in mind and that's to get this thing fixed and taken care of and not set up video and take pictures and I mean it was a sight to behold. I had tools all over the place. People were coming and going look, looking at the overlook, looking at me. I was hoping no one would ask if I needed any help because I didn't feel like talking to anybody. Nobody did and uh, you know I just want to get this thing done but um, so I had to put everything back together in the dark, get everything cleaned up because I don't want to just throw everything in here. It's got to be organized or it's going to be lost the next time. And uh, I didn't roll in here till about 11, 11.30. The only good thing, and, and I wouldn't have seen this if that didn't happen last night, is I finally saw the northern lights. It wasn't the pretty northern lights that everyone thinks about. It was basically just a band that went from like, uh, I don't even know what way that is, but from opposite ends in a like a rainbow pattern. And it was quite wide in the sky, but it was just a gray. When I first saw it, I looked and I thought somebody had this huge spotlight and then I followed it and it circled around and uh, dropped down to the horizon and then about 20 minutes later it started fading and then 20 minutes after that it was completely gone. So I don't know if I caught the most of it or if that happened to be the tail end of it. Um, it was still cool to see because I'd never seen any of it on this trip and I'm going to start heading south so I'm less likely to see it anymore. But uh, to see that was cool, um, and it was straight above me, so it actually hurt my neck trying to look at it um, for as long as I did. But So, I mean, there's a silver lining to that. Plus, I did figure out that I've stopped the, uh, the squeaking, the, the knocking, whatever it was, um, both of those things, and uh, can at least drive this thing to a place that I can fix it proper. And if not, I will fix it when I get home. I'll put in a new Aussie locker, put in new gears. I've still got the main ring gear if I decide to put that back in. So it's not the end of the world. Um, it is a pain, obviously, because uh, that front end has never given me an issue. I've hardly used my four-wheel drive. And it could be, you know, I installed this thing two years ago, but like I said, it's been running two years fine, even on trails, even over boulders, no problems. It's gotten me out of situations. Um, but uh, all of a sudden something's not working, which tends me to either believe something's wrong with the Aussie locker or something's wrong with those springs. But I'll find out soon enough. Um, for now, today, I'm just kind of chilling. Kind of, I was tired after that. Um, doing that in the middle of nowhere, trying not to have someone come and say, you got to get out of here, or you can't do this here. Um, it's it's kind of stressful and, and hoping that nothing goes wrong. Um, I got lucky that nothing went wrong. That, that hub came right off. I couldn't believe it. The bolts came right out. I did shoot them with deep creep, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's one of those things you cross your fingers and, and you hope for the best. So I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people with a lot of opinions. I'm going to go ahead and post this now as an update because I am now on the eastern side of Whitehorse. I am heading south. I'm going to go through uh, Hyder. I'm going to then drop down into Washington through uh, first Vancouver, then Washington, and then make it down to Portland. I need to f look up and see uh, who I said I'd try to meet when I was out there. And then somewhere outside of Portland, someone also asked if, uh, if I was in the area, I could stop by. So I'm going to try to do that. Um, but I just looked at the forecast, and in this area for the next few days, it's supposed to be beautiful. So... That was my night. That's my day so far. Um, I'm gonna 
continue to organize a little bit, drink some coffee, and uh, just start slowly moving and getting some more miles behind me. But for now, that's it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Leave your comments below. Subscribe, hit the like button, all that good stuff. Talk to you later.